Hey guys, so back again, uh, another request to talk about AVAPS and exactly uh, what it is, how it functions, how you can use it as a respiratory therapist. If you're a student and you're learning AVAPS, I'm extremely um, happy for you and impressed that you're asking this question because AVAPS tends to be a mode of non-invasive mechanical ventilation that you find on the V60 BiPAP or CPAP machine, that basically a non-invasive ventilator that we don't typically learn about throughout our schooling. Um, it tends to be something that we discover and start to use as licensed practitioners and probably varies based off a of region and facility usage. Okay, so that's probably the, 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 the truth in it because honestly, I know one therapist in my region that loves AVAPS and I know several hundred who would never even try to touch it, okay? So the fact that this is coming from possibly a student really impresses me, okay? So here we go. We're going to talk about AVAPS and what it is and how you use it. Now, I told you that the first thing is it's on the V60, okay, and it's non-invasive, Excuse me. So it's on the V60 and it's a non-invasive mode of ventilation. Now I have AVAPS written here because the first thing you need to do anytime you hear an acronym, AVAPS, SIMV, PRVC, APRV, is ask yourself, what do those words mean? What, are the, what does that acronym stand for? Because if you understand what the acronym stands for, then you can probably figure out what the mode does, okay? So let's talk about what the acronym of AVAPS actually stands for, okay? So AVAPS stands for Average Volume, Average Volume Assured Pressure Support. Okay, now, keywords there, average volume assured, which means that you're talking about a mode of mechanical ventilation that is going to do its best to assure an average tidal volume, okay? If you can assure an average tidal volume, then you can assure an average minute ventilation, okay? And that's key because that's what some of these patients are looking for and what they need, okay? So average volume assured, pressure support. Pressure support is the change in pressure that's going to augment spontaneous tidal volume, okay, to establish a target tidal volume. Now, if you don't change pressure support, then as the patient's work of breathing goes down, or if their effort goes down, then their tidal volume will go down, okay? If their efforts go up, then their tidal volume will go up, okay? So pressure support does. It's there. If you're in, let's say you're on a ventilator, for example. So scratch this for a second, okay? Take mechanical ventilation, for example. You're on CPAP with pressure support. You're a CPAP of 5 and a pressure support of 10, okay? The patient's breathing tidal volumes, pulling tidal volumes of 500. If their efforts decrease, then so will their tidal volumes, right? If their efforts increase, then so will their tidal volumes, okay? Because the pressure support set at 10 is going to augment that tidal volume in relationship to the patient's effort, okay? Now, if we go back and take a step back to non-invasive ventilation where we're primarily talking about BiPAP here, okay? Then if you think about traditional BiPAP, you understand that you're talking about a set EPAP and a set IPAP. So if you're on an IPAP of 15 and you're on an EPAP of 5, then you have a pressure support of 10. The patient may be pulling good tidal volumes while you're right there in front of them. But 30 minutes later, when you're in another room, the efforts decrease. Maybe, um, maybe it's related to narcotic administration or something like that. And their respiratory drive decreases. Their efforts to pull adequate tidal volumes decrease. 
your tidal volume is going to decrease because pressure support is set at 10. It, there's nothing, it's not going to increase. It's not going to say, wait a second, the patient's tidal volumes are going down. Let me increase, increase IPAP so that I can increase pressure support so that I can ensure um, a, 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 an adequate tidal volume. It's not going to do that because that's not how normal ST BiPAP functions. Okay? It's a set tidal volume. I mean, it's a set, scratch that. It's a set pressure support based off your IPAP and your EPAP. And tidal volumes will vary based off of patient effort. Okay? That's standard BiPAP. Now, when you put a patient on a V60 and you choose AVAPS ventilation, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to see that the settings are slightly different. There's not an IPAP setting. Okay? So let's do it like this. ST, you have an IPAP. I don't want that to be I wrap because I don't wrap. <laughs> so you have an IPAP setting and an EPAP setting. And those two will determine your pressure support and determine the amount of assist that's going to affect ventilation. Okay. Now when you go into AVAPS, you're going to see an EPAP setting, okay? This is to assure oxygenation, just like PEEP or CPAP does, okay? It increases baseline, it increases mean airway pressure, increases FRC, and improves oxygenation. EPAP, CPAP, um, and PEEP all function the same. It's just which one do you refer to in which setting, in which machine, in which... Um, non-invasive ventilation, SIMV, CPAP, or first part, depends on the, the mode, right? So you're, you're going to set in AVAPS, you're going to set an EPAP, okay? Now, when it comes to setting an IPAP, you don't set an IPAP, okay? You're going to tell the machine to deliver a minimum of IPAP, a minimum IPAP, or work up to a maximum IPAP. So you're going to actually set two IPAPs, a max and a minimum IPAP. And then you're going to set something that you never set in the ST mode or in traditional BiPAP mode of mechanical ventilation. You're going to set a target tidal volume. And that target tidal volume is important, okay? Because that tells the ventilator, the non-invasive ventilator, the V60, it says if the patient's average tidal volume falls below the target tidal volume, then I want you to incrementally increase the IPAP, which will incrementally increase your pressure support which should result in a larger tidal volume, which hopefully brings you close to the target tidal volume. Now, what if the target tidal volume, the XL tidal volume, over a measured amount of time comes back greater than the target tidal volume? Then you're telling the machine, the V60, to decrease IPAP, which will decrease pressure support, which will result in a smaller tidal volume. Okay, and hopefully get closer to your target tidal volume, which will help you sustain more of a target minute ventilation for your patient. Now, this mode of mechanical ventilation, this non invasive mode of, of, of mechanical ventilation, is not typically ideal for somebody in the emergency department. If you have um, a patient that comes in that's acutely ill, you probably should be keeping a close eye on them and you yourself manually adjusting the IPAP which will adjust the pressure support to assure an adequate tidal volume. This mode, AVAPS, will not increase, ever make an increase greater than 2.5 centimeters at a time. So if you have a patient who's crashing, it's going to take a minute for AVAPS to get them probably back up to par. You need to have your eyes on that patient taking care of them, manually adjusting it, okay? But for your long-term patient, for your neuromuscular disease patients, for your uh, cervical fracture patients who are trying to come off and stay off of mechanical ventilation and they, they wax and wane. You know, sometimes they're breathing good and then they get tired and they go down. 
this mode of mechanical ventilation was probably non-invasive mechanical ventilation was probably help those patients to keep them off the ventilator while you can't stand by their side the entire 12 hours or 8 hours or 10 hours or whatever you work and monitor them okay this will will help you in being your little respiratory therapist at the bedside making sure they maintain the target tidal volume now this mode of AVAP sounds an awful lot like another mode of mechanical ventilation not non-invasive but true invasive mechanical ventilation PRVC you set a target tidal volume you set an eye time and you tell the ventilator adjust flow to assure a tidal volume in that's close to this target tidal volume and that ventilator will increase pressure and decrease pressure with compliance changes to assure that tidal volume right so it's not much different than PRVC except from the way it functions okay very different in the way they function the way they do it but the idea behind this mode is similar okay the 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 you have to think about it if you watch my PRVC video I talk about a little RT a little imaginary RT that's inside the ventilator that's saying oh tidal volume is too low increase flow so we can get a higher pressure which will give us a higher tidal volume or tidal volume is too high decrease flow so we can get a lower tidal volume closer to the target tidal volume think about that the same thing with this one with AVAPS you're going to have a little imaginary RT inside the non-invasive ventilator, inside the V60, saying, hey, average tidal volume is too low. We need to increase IPAP because Shelly has told me to keep the target tidal volume here. Or, 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 or Braden has said he wants the average tidal volume at 400, so I'm here working for you, so we need to increase the IPAP. Oh, wait, now the, I, now the average tidal volume is too high. Turn the pressure down, and it will adjust the pressure automatically without you being in a room having to do it while maintaining an assured tidal volume, which will equal, uh, hopefully, an assured minute ventilation. Okay? Now, this is a, a quick rundown of AVAPs. Okay? Very, very skeleton-based rundown of AVAPs. If you would like to see a better video on AVAPs, okay, with actually seeing the device in front of you, then check out this video. I'm going to link to it right here, up here in this corner right here. Check that out, and uh, hopefully that helps also. And look, I'm not, it is lots of information all over the web, so just search it. If this is a mode that you use routinely in your facility, then learn the mode and become the expert on the mode because as a respiratory therapist, it's your job to be the expert. It's not the nurse. It's not the doctor. It's not the patient. It's not anybody else. It's your job to become the expert in helping people breathe better. Go be great.